Tell us about working on Gossip Girl. Any fun memories? Yeah, I mean, it was monumental for me, right? Like, I was, um, I was living in England, living at mum and dad's house, and I was 19, and I auditioned for this, uh, for this American TV show that, um, you know, people were confident was going to get picked up to become a full season, a full series, because that's how it works in the US. You know, a bunch of, they call them pilots. It's the first episode. Usually you make the pilot and then um, the networks, they decide if they want to make a full season, right? So um, people were confident that the Gossip Girl pilot was going to be turned into a full series. Um, it had people who had worked on the OC and, uh, you know, previous, what it was for a series of books. So there was that built-in fan base. So everyone was confident. And then, um, you know, we made this pilot and it, it felt you know, when things are just feel good, they feel like they're cooking, you know, it was good chemistry and it was New York City and exciting storylines and good characters. And you're like, OK, this feels like it could could be something, could be yeah. something people could enjoy. Yeah. And then um, it got picked up and, you know, I moved to New York and I was like 19, eyes wide in New York City and just like, wow. And um, and then we were there for the next five and a half years yeah. and I just had the most amazing time. Character was great, wonderful experiences, um, people were great to work with, and of course, so many people enjoyed the show, so that's why we're here today. Yeah, definitely, and it spans so many generations now, for sure. Which is but, crazy to me. Yeah, yeah, but you playing Chuck for such a long period of time, I'm going to ask a controversial question. Just between friends, would you describe him as misunderstood? Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, it depends, right? It's like anything, if you kind of meet someone in a snapshot moment, you're gonna have an opinion based on that moment, right? Whereas if you've been able to kind of watch someone's entire life or get the full picture of something or someone, then you're more informed or your opinion's going to be different, right? And I feel like if you are somebody who's watched the entire show, you see really this is kind of a young, this is a boy becoming a man type thing. Um, and someone who's figuring out life as we're all doing, especially we're all doing all the time, but especially in our late teens, you know, into our 20s. And um, so I think, yeah, I think he's misunderstood. I think a lot of us are misunderstood to a degree, you know, um, and certainly things that, that things that happen to us. I think we misunderstand them. So, yeah, he's definitely misunderstood, you know, but that's what I liked about the character. It's a very complex character, you know, layers. Layered. Very, very layered. Well, obviously, one of the best parts of the show to me was the fact that it really catapulted a lot of designers and brands. It was very fashion forward. I would say that the fashion on the show was almost like its own character. Is that something that you appreciated, getting to dress in the way that you did? Yeah, definitely. Um, it was massive, you know. The fashion was massive. Um, Eric Damon, who was our wardrobe designer, was really, really good. I remember it, no matter what time of day it was, it was six o'clock in the morning, he's just impeccable, yeah. you know, which is, a, is, a, is an achievement. Um, so New York City, we, you know, fashion is integral there, right? And we were almost like a, um, we were almost like a TV, like catch, catwalk show, yeah. like each, each week, you know, people were curious to see what the clothes were gonna be, what designers were on there. Um, it was cool to have your clothes on the show. So it was very intertwined and, um, and, and definitely very important for these characters who are vain to a degree, who are, you know, who value this stuff, who have the money to spend on luxury items, who are trying to be cool, um, and also trying to express themselves. You know, each character has a little kind of unique twist. You know, with Chuck, it was the ascot, and it was the bow tie and the scarf, and he had all of these little things. Um, so it was, it was very, very important. And I, I got to go to cool fashion shows in New York when it was fashion week and stuff like that. And it always blew my mind because in the beginning I didn't know that these shows, it makes sense, but like the shows are like two minutes long. Mm -hmm. A fashion show is like two minutes, sometimes 10 minutes. Yeah. But in your mind you're like, oh, this is going to be more. It's, we it's weird. It's like all of this work throughout the year or for the season or whatever it is these big designers and then like it's just a bunch of people walk out and they walk away again the end yeah, you know that's it. And I was like oh, I just kind of spent like you know we got, took a car here it was like a big deal there's loads of people it's over like that I'm like all right 
what else am I going to do tonight? You know? For sure. But um, yeah, so cool. Love it. Well, I'm going to ask a couple more questions, then we're going to invite you guys to go to microphone number one on the left or microphone number two right over here. So get those questions ready and you can head to the microphone and ask a question to Mr. Westwick. Um, but let's talk about the cast. One more Gossip Girl question. Let's talk about the cast. Is there anyone that you got, on, got along with? I almost said got on. I'm turning British now. That you got on or along with on the cast more than others? Anyone that you bonded with? I got, on, got along with everybody. I mean, it was interesting. Depending on what was going on in the storyline, I think you kind of spend more time together or um, have a little bond over stuff. So, like, Leighton and I worked together so much and, like, we had wonderful scenes, intimate scenes, supportive scenes, scenes where our characters were bonding and her and I would always laugh and joke in between, um, in between takes and, you know, I, I, we were very, very close, you know, and then, so we kind of had a good relationship and then Chase and I, our characters obviously are best friends and uh, Chase and I lived together in real life for the first one or two seasons of Gossip Girl, you know, we were just young guys. So it made a lot of sense to kind of just um, live together, which was great. So obviously we had a very close relationship, um, but we were all pretty close, you know, it was, yeah. it was very cool. That's gotta be amazing for Gossip Girl fans in New York to just see you guys hanging out in real life. Yeah. yeah did I mean, that happen a lot where they recognized both of you? It did, and we all used to go out a little bit um, from time to time, especially if it was like, uh, a birthday or what someone's um, family were in town. Yeah. You know, usually the, the other cast used to like to come and say hello. I remember we had my dad's birthday in um, this really cool um, jazz bar called uh, Cafe Wa, and uh, the rest of the gang came out and we had some drinks and partied and danced and it was beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Well, you started young on the show. You said you were 19 when you got the part, I right? Was, so yeah. you grew up really on that set. Yeah, I think I did. Well, a, a good portion of it, definitely, 19 to 25. And then still think you do, still, still think you've got a bit of growing up to do after 25, you know? And also, it's interesting because that was such an intense life and schedule, you know, um, living in New York working on this show, like it was fantastic, but it's like 12 hours, so a filming day is usually 12 hours. Um, and it was Monday through Friday, and Fridays, you'd always start a little bit later because you have to shoot stuff that takes place at night. Um, and weekend's always the weekend, so they know that they don't have to, it's called a turnaround, so they know they don't have to get you back in with a certain amount of rest time. So the Friday would start later and you'd shoot into the small, uh, the, the wee hours. Um, so yeah, look, it was, it was intense. Um, and it's performance, right? So you're learning a ton of lines and you're doing stuff. Like everyone thinks it's like just glamorous and chilled and easy. It's not, I'm sure it's not the hardest job in the world, but it's not the easiest job. Yeah. Um, and it is enjoyable. But um, yeah, so I mean, it was, it was intense. It was definitely, you're kind of just focused and you're in that bubble and you're doing it, you're doing it, doing it. And then when it's over, it's time, it was time to reflect on things, and you know, and I headed to Los Angeles for a bit, and now obviously I'm back in London, back home. So yeah, yeah life uh, has different chapters. Right. Well, being an American, now living in the UK, it was the flip side for you. So what was it like to go from living in the UK to America? Were there things that you missed from home? What were the differences? Yeah, definitely. I mean, well, difference number one was that I was living in my own place, right? So I was 19 was uh, at mum and dad's just outside London and then um, went to New York City. And I'd been to New York as a tourist with my mum and dad like when I was younger. And then I went there as like a adult, sort of, um, <laughs> working, so working. Um, so it was, um, it was cool. It was just, you just thrown into it and you just kind of, you don't really think, do you? You just kind of like, all right, let's do it, you know? I think as you get a little bit older, you kind of, a little bit more hesitant. You know, I always heard that, like when I was younger, like people said, oh, you, you kind of, it's like that, that fearlessness that you have when you're, that the very young have, you know, it's kind of interesting. Cause now I'm like, oh, you know, you start questioning things, thinking things through a lot more. You're just gun ho aren't you? And you're like 19 and stuff. Yeah, and New York's not that unlike London. I mean, they kind of have a bit of a pub yeah. vibe, but is that something you miss? Like, you know, certain foods from home, just differences between the UK and America. Oh yeah, there was a shop. I've forgotten what it's called, but it was uh, an English shop. 
and I used to go and buy Ribena and stuff like that. And it was like 15 times the price. It was mental. And uh, what else did I used to get? I used to get like, I don't know, crunchies, the chocolate bar, you know? <laughs> it's like weird stuff. Uh, Marmite. Um, but yeah, it was weird. And then there was a fish and chip shop. Mm-hmm. And I actually, it was pretty decent. Oh. Pretty decent, surprisingly. Um, but they didn't give, they didn't, they didn't, it wasn't cod. They gave you something else. It like, had replaced cod. And I was like, all right. But the batter, you know, it's all in the batter, right? right? Little taste of home. Where are you, where are you from? Uh, originally Texas, so Orlando, understand? Florida. I was not talking to you like you're English. Like, yeah, do you, no. you don't have a clue. But what I've lived I'm here for about. six and a half years. Oh, so you know, yeah. you know a bit about a yeah. bit about batter. I do. A bit about batter. Try and say that quickly. Found a new tongue twister. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, we're talking about fish and chips. This is pretty cool, isn't it? Got into food somehow. Ah! Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the American yeah, shops had, had here. Good fish and chips. The end. Yeah, the American shops here just have Twinkies. They just think that's what we eat. Yeah. Twinkies and gummy bears and things. So you're from Texas? Originally, yeah. I'm going to Texas on Tuesday. Oh, have you never been? I've been quite a few times. Yeah. Yeehaw. Where are you from in Texas? Uh, I was there till I was nine, so El Paso and Houston, but like Orlando, Florida's home for me. Have you been to Disney and stuff yet? To Disney been World, where? Orlando, Florida. Oh yeah, Disney of course. World. Yeah. 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 What's that got to do with Texas? <laughs> Sorry, you speak so quickly. I, didn't I was in Texas till I was nine. But it's, it's, I feel like it's not my interview. I, I feel bad talking about myself. Well. Uh, till I was nine, and then I've mostly lived in Orlando, Florida. So that's oh. home for me. Okay, yeah. thank Disney you for that. World. Yeah, I've lived in uh, five states. It could be a very long explanation. I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, um, speaking of America, your American accent. Good, talk right. about that. It's flawless. Round of applause Some, for that. That's not easy. <sighs> Why, thank you. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, yeah, tell me about that. A practice. 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 That was it. It's not always great. Like, if I haven't done it for, like, six months, then, like anything, it wouldn't be. It takes a moment. Especially now I think my hearing's going, or maybe it's this echo. It's I think freaking it's me out. Echo. So if I can't hear, then I'm really screwed and I'm not going to be able to do it. But, um, yeah, just practice Watching a lot of American TV, actually, the truth of everything is rapping a lot to Eminem. Oh. Um, he was your inspiration. I don't know about inspiration, but, like, he really, um, like, accentuates his, like, you know, his, his, his like words. Because he drags out things to make, to, drags out sounds or, or, vow, or letters to make, his, make words sound like they rhyme even when they wouldn't rhyme. And apparently that's why Dr. Dre wanted to sign him because he was like, this guy makes words rhyme that don't even rhyme. Yeah. Because he does it with just like his style of delivery. So if you're listening to it, you can really hear like where his tongue is almost in his mouth, which is what creates the sound. So I've only really realized that now, speaking about it here. Um, But it helped For the first time, but it helped me, yeah. Um, So rapping to a lot of Eminem. Yeah. It's a pro tip if you're trying to learn an American. Giving all my, giving all my goods away, you know. Yes, that's a Monopoly away. events exclusive yeah. right here. Another question from me, but again, guys, we have the microphone. Don't be shy. I, they're always shy on the first panel. Of Don't the be shy. Don't be shy. Get those questions. Courage. Raised. Yes. Where Aaron is right there, that microphone on the left, and we have a microphone on the right. Just head up to the microphone to ask a question. Well, I was going to say that having watched so much Gossip Girl, it would have been surprising to hear your real accent, but... Yeah. I have also been watching White Gold, which is an amazing show. Yes, round of applause Thanks for White for Gold. So Thank amazing you. and such a cool transition into sort of more of a comedic uh, role. So how yeah. was working on White Gold for I you? Lo- well, it was great. I love comedy. I want to do more comedy. And I'm <laughs> trying to do a show with the guy, trying to do a new show with the guy, Damon, who created White Gold. Well, we're going to do it. we just got to do it. <laughs> um, so... I love comedy. I like laughing more. I used to be a really serious person who was into really serious stuff, and now I'm not because it's draining. Yeah. You know? Unless it's like late at night and I'm watching shows about murderers on Netflix. Yeah, what are you watching? What is your Netflix? Shows about murderers on yeah. Netflix. Just murderers. Any type of murder stuff. Serial killers? Yeah, yeah. That's very dark. It's really dark. <laughs> who are it, your favorite serial I don't know why, though. It helps me go to sleep. Does it look, it's a bit weird. But come on, some, I'm not the only one because there's a lot of that stuff on there. So it's got to be like, you guys watch it too. <laughs> you know? I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because it's, I don't know, you feel safe because there's no murderers around you. So you're like, oh, this is cozy. 
Yeah, fascinating. You know, I feel warm and safe. There's no one trying yeah. to kill me. Did you see that? So it reminds you, so you're grateful yeah. for not being murdered. It's, it's good advice. It's very good advice. Did you see Night Stalker? No. Put it on the list. What's that? Very, very good. It's about... Wait, uh, tell me about it. California killer. I, be, I forget his name. He's actually really hot. Is that weird? He's really hot. Is that yeah. what you said? I don't know why. We're just getting all sorts of exclusives here in Wales. Night Stalker, uh, California killer, serial killer. This isn't the one about what the Jake Gyllenhaal was in. Is this a film or a... Richard, Richard Ramirez. I need Wait, to that name rings tape. a bell. Yeah, you'll love it. It's real yeah. dark. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely, there's definitely a few of them on there. Uh, and then, I don't know, yeah, a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any, any lighter shows? Oh, I just watch? watched The Terminal List Ooh. with Chris Pratt. Mm-hmm. It's so good. It's so good. He's like a Navy SEAL. And there's a bunch of conspiracy stuff going on. It's really cool. So like, I like my macho stuff, but then I like my funny stuff and my serial killer stuff. You like falling asleep to the murderers. Yeah. Totally you know? fine. Yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. We, no, it actually is really interesting for us. We like to hear from the celebrities to see what they're watching, you know, from an actor's yeah. standpoint. Yeah. Yeah. And documentaries. Love, love a little documentary. Awesome. We have a question for you. Uh, this, ma'am, did you have a question over here? Yeah, um, yes. Where are you, darling? Wave, wave. Hey. Yeah, there she is. Um, I was just wondering if you could do a sample of the rap from Eminem for us, please. <laughs> Sorry, what did you say? Could you do a sample of the Eminem raps for us, please? I can't understand. A sample of the? Eminem. Oh, oh, a sample um, of an Eminem rap, she says. Yeah, but everything's so rude, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it's uh, just between friends. You're fine. One second. <laughs> Put him on the spot. I love Oh, him. my God. <laughs> what's, what's, what, wait, wait, wait. No, I can't. It's too much swearing, man. All the ones I know are the really bad ones. Okay. You know? <laughs> Cool, calm, just like my mom with a couple of Valium inside her palm. It's Mr. Mifchief with a trick up his sleeve. Pull up on you like Christopher Reeves. I can't describe the vibe I get when I drive by six people and five I hit. Oh shit, I started a marsh pit. Anyway, whatever. Yes! <laughs> Standing ovation from her. It's hard to avoid talking about really bad things with his yeah. lyrics. And I don't want to be a, you know, a... Uh, a, a vehicle for bad stuff, so yeah, you know, peace and love, peace and love, dude. And serial killers, serial That's killers, weird. man. It's weird up here, you guys. We love you, dude. This is the first panel of the day. I don't know where this is gonna go from here. We have a question on the right from the lovely lady in the white dress. Hello, lovely hi. lady in the white dress. Oh my god, that was loud. Sorry, it's really loud. Yeah, um, hi. hi. So, Gossip Girls getting a reboot. Have you seen any of it? I saw like five seconds of it. Yeah. Would you? ever think of maybe going back as Trek? I mean, I did. I, I said to them, it was really weird. They were like, uh, they said, I don't know, they, they were like really weird about it. Because Georgina's going back. Oh, is she? Yeah. <laughs> I know no one really likes Breaking it. News. But, I, I mean, love her. Michelle's great. Michelle's a wonderful person. Great actress. Michelle's but... lovely. Sweetheart. <laughs> I don't know. I... We, I, I, it's a really strange situation that I don't know how to explain. Mm. Really? Okay, just thought I'd ask. We just said, <laughs> I said yeah, and they said nah. Oh. <laughs> we'll start, we'll start a petition, a change petition. What? We'll get, we'll get a petition going, we'll get you back. Yeah, but then if I don't, it just looks really like loserish, right? Yeah, yeah. It looks <laughs> desperate, you know? Looks desperate. Thank you anyway. Thank you. Is she not so Blair with her outfit? Give her a round of applause, by the way. Bringing well the fashion. <laughs> we have another question here on the left. Hi. Hey. Hi. Uh, do you think it's a good idea that they've like done a reboot? Of what? Gossip Girl? Yeah. Oh. Um, don't, don't know. <laughs> um, not, maybe. I don't know. Um, do, is it a good? I'm make sure. Do we, Do people? I think people do what they want, really. You know. Do you? What do you think? I don't think there was a need for it to be remade. It's they're not just, been remade, though, well, has it? Yeah, it's just like a reboot. But they're doing that to everything now. They're like, you, they just need to keep the originals. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 
Any reboots that you like that they've come out with? I mean, for example, Cobra Kai is amazing, and that's some not a reboot, but you know, Karate but these aren't Kid. reboots, are they? It's just like yeah, the same genre. Kind of. It's like the same. It's like um, wait. I started watching the Scream, the new Scream movie, but I had to leave, so I didn't finish it. But it looked really good, and uh, I loved Scream back in the day, man. Like 1998, I was like 10, and it was scary. It was scary. Um, I don't know. I feel like you know it's interesting, right? Because it's corporate stuff, and they feel like there's a brand there, and all of that, and they don't want to take a risk on something new, but then they make something that sucks, that was, you know, already around. Yeah. I don't know, it's weird. Yeah. A lot of people in power who don't get it, I guess, I don't know, whatever. Right. Yeah. We've got a question here on the right, hi. Hi, yeah, um, I've got two questions. So, um, I work in film and TV in a locations department. Um, so, what was your favorite location to film at in Gossip Girl? And then the second question is, who did you think Gossip Girl was going to be? Yeah. Um, by the way, your job, on re like how you guys find like locations is mental. And so, thank you so much for that. It's really, really cool. I always thought it'd be really cool to like go and sc like scout out places and because it's so important, right? You're trying to find something that's a great fit, that looks right, that makes sense for the story. And then you get a wacky director who's got a vision in his mind, so I get it. Um, favorite location on Gossip Girl? Wow, well, we had an embarrassment of riches there. We certainly did. Um, Empire State Building, top of the Empire State Building. They let me, this wasn't actually in the show, but they let me climb into the very needle of the Empire, and no one goes up there except like the maintenance man. It's nuts, like in the very, very top. So I'm one of very few people who have been in the very top of the Empire State Building, so I feel pretty cool about that. Um, so that was an amazing location. Um, and then, what was the second part of your question? Uh, who did you think was oh, going to yeah. be Gossip Girl? Um, I thought it was going to be, I thought, <laughs> I thought they were going to go for someone like funnier, like a Dorota, you know? But I remember that scene, we could not get that scene shot because Penn could not stop laughing. <laughs> we were there, like it was like something that should have taken an hour to shoot. It took like three hours because we were all sitting around in the circle. For some reason, they'd been blocking out the words on the script and none of us knew who it was going to be until that day as well, which was really weird, like as if we were going to leak it. And then, um, and then he, blessed me, just could not, when he's like, yeah, it's me, or whatever he says. <laughs> like, he just pissed himself laughing. So, yeah, I don't know, there you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I've got a question here on the left. Hey. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, basically, uh, just wondered about white gold. Yeah. Because obviously it sort of finished quite abrupt. And no, is it ever going to be you another full third? You had two full seasons. Yeah, but is there ever going to be a third one, do you reckon? Or um, So here's what happened there. They, we were all set to shoot a third season, and it was going to be amazing. I know the story, and I'm not going to tell you what it is. It was amazing. And BBC and Netflix, because it was right in the pandemic, they had a falling out with each other over budget, and that was it. And basically... It was the most annoying, frustrating thing. So Netflix was supposed to pay more money because it was season three, which is fine. BBC started getting funny about having the, their content back um, for a longer period of time. This is probably a boring story, I don't know, but I'm just gonna tell the truth. And then they had a falling out and that was the end of that. But I'm trying to convince Damon Beasley uh, to go through with his idea of doing it as a film to finish to finish so get on the internet write to people at the BBC write to people at Netflix make it happen because I'm telling you this third season or like whatever let's call it the third story would be really good it'd be funny as yeah, hell the, the last two were awesome cheers man it's, it's just, it's I want to do it finished. I want to do it I want to do it um, you know, it's just about, again, it's just people in 
yeah. control of stuff. <laughs> You know. <laughs> Great question. Thank you so much. We only have time for a couple more questions, so we're going to go to the left microphone here. Hi. Hello. Yo. Um, what character from White Gold would you like to meet in real life and why? <laughs> um, in real life and why? Uh, who's the um, Who's the gangster? What's his name again? Ronnie. Ronnie. Yeah. You'd want to meet him. I don't know why. He just seemed like pretty funny and interesting, you know? Something about old, like, gangsters that are quite interesting and amusing. Do you think you'd be on his bad side? I don't think he's harmless, really. <laughs> Fair it enough. It wasn't that scary. You could charm him. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Sure. Thank Cheers, you. man. Who do you want to meet out of it? Not Vincent. No. No. Um, he's too, yeah. Fitzpatrick. He's funny, right? Yeah. Proper weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Good question. Cheers, mate. Time for possibly one or two more questions, everybody, if you want to get up to the microphone. Oh, we've got one here on the left. So, oh, yeah. my sister would kill me if I didn't ask, but what is your favorite season of Gossip Girl to film and why? Season two was my favorite because, you know, it just felt cool, man, going back to the show that we knew that everybody was, not everyone, but like a lot of people were starting to really enjoy. And um, we started off filming in the Hamptons and like I'd grown up like hearing about the Hamptons being rapped about by like Puff Daddy and stuff. So I was like, whoa, I'm going to the Hamptons, man. <laughs> and uh, so we were filming out there and we, I think it started with this like white party thing and I'd never heard of what a white party was because I'm from Stevenage and then <laughs> and uh and so yeah man was at this like w this white party thing and then apparently I, I thought it was just something they did in the t they were doing in the tv show and then like people said oh no we like do these white parties in New York it's like a thing and I just thought you lot are weird <laughs> and uh like, what's the point in just dressing up in white I don't get it it's like culty isn't it there's another show, cult. I watch loads of cult shows. Keep sweet, pray and open. No, I can't talk about that guy. Oh. I can't talk about that guy. That I is can't. the most disturbing, disturbing show on planet Earth. Have you not seen this show? That's not right, is it? No. It's not right. The cult stuff and the Scientology stuff, you talk about nightmares. That's like, yeah. I feel like Chuck could have a cult. Huh? I feel like Chuck could have a cult. He's very could charming. Have a cult. He, yeah, he can, he can talk anybody into anything. Chuck doesn't care about that stuff, man. <laughs> you know. Um, where were we? <laughs> oh yeah, season two. Season Loved two. it. It was great. Yes. Felt good. Um, the end. Cheers. We just went right back to the Netflix shows. Couldn't help it. We got, yeah, we got a little sidetracked. Couldn't help it. Did you have one last question? Thank you. We've got one last Hello. question on microphone on the left. If you didn't end up playing Chuck Bass, is there any other actor you thought would have done a, uh, like a good job? No. <laughs> you wouldn't care about Chuck Bass if I hadn't played Chuck Bass. So there you go. No, I don't know. It was really good writing, to be honest. Um, I think I was very blessed with that, you know. It's hard to... I've done some really... Like, if you've been an actor long enough, you do good jobs and you do bad jobs. And, um, you know, the writing is essential. You know, it's great. To, it's very important to have a solid script and then solid characters. I think I was blessed with this character. Very interesting. We got um, enough episodes to really, really explore the character and take it to very interesting places and have fun with it. And... Um, so yeah, it was you know a lot of it was great writing, and then I kind of just interpreted it, it and did my thing, and yeah, was it really? Yes. Thanks Question. for your question. Thank you. Where do you think Chuck is now in life? What's um, he doing? What's he up to? Well, that's the thing, isn't it? And it's in, just this why the person earlier who said about the reboot. It's kind of like it's a pretty interesting question. Like, where would he be? Yeah. And that's why I thought like, oh. Yeah, like have you know bring him back for a minute and um, let's let's see because it is interesting to see what would have happened, you know, because he had the kid, he get the marriage, and like you know you could do like really dramatic stuff and like 
are, is that still happening? Is everyone still thriving or some terrible things happened? Who knows? But I don't know. It's really interesting because with a character like that, it was just kind of the possibilities did seem endless, you know? And we did explore many, many different kind of things, you know? There was when he kind of ended up in Paris and was being a different person and, uh, you know, all sorts of the stuff with the dad and all of this stuff with the mom and all of this, you know? Yeah. It's really interesting. So it's a character that I've always, you know, I don't think I ever kind of put him to bed, you know? I never kind of just put him to bed. It was like, it's like a friend that you don't really see anymore. Yeah. You know, and you're like, oh, I wonder what you're up to. Yeah. That's the way I feel about it. Yeah. Interesting. Or were you happy with how everything ended, how it was all wrapped up in the end? Yeah, I am, because by the end of it, I couldn't wait to, fi to finish, you know? Sure. Just not from a point of being, like, jaded or anything. It wasn't about that. It was just like, okay, this is five and a half years playing the same character. And it wasn't easy to play, because the voice is very different from my voice. His movements are very different. And so it was very... Um, you know, it was quite... Demo not quite demanding, but... Like, it it's not relaxing characters play, mm -hmm. you know? So um, I was ready for a change and I felt like we'd done everything we could at that time, you know? Right. Like it might be different now, like if somebody came back and they were like, hey, we want to do it. There's this, is a Chuck Bass spin-off show or something like that. That'd be sick, right? I think it would be. We'd watch that, right? Heck yeah. I think it'd be sick. Like, sure. I don't know where it'd be. I had this idea of doing like Chuck Bass in, in London like dominating like a private members club or something like that. Yeah. You know? He'd I don't know. Perfectly. I don't know. I don't know. Nobody wants to do it apparently. Was it refreshing to then go into white gold and play a completely different character, kind of, you know, yeah, totally was, different than Chuck? For sure. But it, well, there were some years in between, definitely. You know, and I did a couple of movies and chilled out a bunch and um, it was nice to have a little bit more time to, uh, to do things with family and stuff. Um, because when we were on that show, like it was, you just locked in, you know, you just can't can't go anywhere or do anything. Um, but yeah, no, that character on White Gold was great. We got two seasons out of that, and that was cool. And then, um, but I feel like the best is yet to come. Yeah. You know, got a couple of movies I just finished in the spring, very different movies. One's a survival thriller um, called Deep Fear, and the other one I'm playing like a a detective hunting one of these serial killers we're talking about. There you go, research. Yeah, yeah. so very excited for, for those. Um, and then I'm going to Texas on Tuesday to shoot this movie. I'm only playing a small role in it, but it's gonna be really um, like nothing you've seen me do before. Awesome. Completely transformed, so I like to do that. I don't wanna just, you know, there's stuff that's easier and then there's stuff that's more challenging and I guess that's what it's about and also just completely transforming right I mean isn't that what acting is a little bit yeah. you know get these people who just like play themselves the whole time but that's all right as well whatever's entertaining yeah. yeah well I can speak for everybody here we are such a fan of yours and and you're so talented so versatile as an actor we're gonna let him get to the autograph area any final words for your fans here in Wales before we let you um, get back I just want to say a massive thank you. Thank you for all the support. And I know you guys could be doing a million things today and it's really, really kind of um, special that you want to kind of come and hang out with me and have a chat. And I know there's loads of other cool people here as well. So thanks a lot. I hope you have a really blessed weekend and take care. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please show your applause, show some love to Ed Westwick.